A warm welcome back. I am Sage and you're watching Kalkine TV, live from Sydney, and this is the Mid-Market Pulse. Let's get started with the Mid-Market Commentary for today and see how ASX 200 traded by lunchtime. Mid-Market. ASX 200 trades high ahead of the RBA policy statement. Financial shares are in the red. The Australian share market continued to trade on a positive note on Tuesday afternoon owing to favourable global cues with the benchmark index ASX 200 adding 20.40 points or 0.29% to trade at 7,049.20. Seven of 11 sectors were trading in green while material was the best performing sector. Other sectors that were leading on ASX 200 include energy, industrials, consumer discretionary, consumer staples, utilities and AREIT. Sectors with losses include information technology, healthcare, financials and telecommunications services. Earlier today, ASX 200 opened higher amid expectations that the Reserve Bank of Australia, or RBA, would hold its cash rate at a record low despite a solid economic recovery and a housing boom. The traders will keep an eye on the RBA's policy announcement this afternoon with focus on guidance on economic growth as well as policy measures on bond yields. In the last policy meeting on April 6th, the RBA had maintained status quo in policy settings including the targets of 10 basis points for the cash rate and the yield on the three-year Australian government bond. And meanwhile, rate-sensitive financial stocks are trading lower ahead of policy announcements by the RBA, led by Bank of Queensland and Adelaide Bank. Three of the big four banks traded in the red, while Westpac Banking Corp edged higher. The Australian dollar is also under stress, down 0.11% to 0.7749. And now, let's have a look at today's top gainers and losers till lunchtime. The top performers on the ASX 200 are Silver Lake Resources Limited, Remelius Resources Limited, Northern Star Resources Limited, Woolley Limited and Resolute Mining Limited. Some of the worst performing shares are Megaport, Limited Domain Holdings Australia Limited, Zipco Limited, Altium Limited and NRW Holdings Limited. Moving on, let's now look at some news updates from the ASX companies. The shares of Odyssey Gold Limited rallied over 100% to 0.155 Australian dollars, hitting their highest since 22nd October 2012, after the Gold Explorer stated drilling at the bottle dump deposit at its Takanara Gold project in Western Australia has revealed significant visible gold. Shares of Reki. Pharmaceuticals Limited, which is developing new classes of synthetic anti-infectives, was trading higher by 5% at 1.190 Australian dollars after the company shared. Recky 327 has showcased bactericidal activity against all six antibiotic-resistant escape pathogens, including drug-resistant mutations, along with two other WHO priority pathogens list. The share price of ResApp Health Limited gained as much as 7.843%, up to 0.055 Australian dollars per share after the company said that health technology firm Ilara Health will be promoting, marketing and selling ResApp DX, a smartphone app for acute respiratory disease diagnosis in Kenya. Bulletin Resources Limited shares rose over 2% after the company unveiled results from the recent drilling program at its Lake Rebecca Gold Project, 150 kilometres east northeast of Kalgoorlie, Western Australia. And Mobicom Limited shares were spotted trading at 0.034 Australian dollars after the company announced that it has signed a share purchase agreement to acquire 100% of Neat Tickets PTY Ltd, a business trading at Neat Ideas for $2,040,000 plus up to 1.5 million shares in MBM. InfoMedia Limited announced that it had acquired US-based e-commerce platform SimplePart for an upfront consideration of 24.5 million US dollars, along with an earn out of up to 20.5 million US dollars over three years. Ramsey's wholly owned funding group has been ascribed an investment grade credit rating of triple B, stable, by credit rating agency Fitch. Nick Scully said that it expected 90% profit rise in the financial year 2021 with sales remaining robust through the March quarter. 
Super Retail Group said that its sales growth has remained strong through the first 44 weeks of the financial year 2021. And WiseTech Global has matched the guidance issued at its first half earnings result. It had anticipated 470 million Australian dollars to 510 million Australian dollars in revenue and 165 million to 190 million Australian dollars in EBITDA for the financial year 2021. On to Flight Centre, who said that its March sales revenue was comfortably higher than the previous coronavirus period record. The March turnover was over 100 million Australian dollars, or 32.7%, higher than February. And Domain Group's revenue grew 2% in the March quarter, owing to expansion in listings as Australia's property market gained strength. In an update to the Macquarie Australia conference, Worley said that it is on track for an improved result in the second half compared to the first half of 2020-21. And now let's take some important updates from the commodity markets. In commodities, crude oil prices rose over 1% amid recovery in demand in the US and China. Brent crude futures closed up 80 cents at US $67.56 a barrel, while the WTI crude futures rose 91 cents to settle at US $64.49 a barrel. Oil stocks such as Santos Limited, Woodside Petroleum Limited and Beach Energy Limited remained in focus today. Gold prices rose over 1% on Monday due to retreats in bond yields and US dollar. The spot gold price rose 1.40% to US 1793.42 an ounce, while the US gold futures settled 1.4% higher at US $1791.80 an ounce. Thanks so much for joining us. That's all for now. Stay tuned for more live updates on Calkine TV across the economy, markets and sectors. We'll be back in a while with our next live show, The Sectoral Pulse. This is Sage signing off.